Well, have you struggled to make peace with your closet? it might have nothing to do with your clothes. Today, we're gonna to talk about 10 items to add to your capsule wardrobe that aren't clothes. Oh, and at the end, for fun, I'll show you a few actual things I'm adding to my wardrobe this spring too. Okay, now I don't want you to get hung up on the word capsule wardrobe. Some of us have capsule wardrobes, some of us don't. I've said I don't like capsule wardrobes because I don't like cardigans. <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily call my wardrobe that. I actually just Googled because I'm like, what is a capsule wardrobe? And it says it's a collection of clothing and accessories that can all mix and match to make several different outfits. While it contains fewer pieces, it's built around a color palette. To me, that suggests like a lot of coordination. Again, that's not really me. But another definition, um, on Wikipedia says a collection of a few essential items of clothing that do not go out of fashion such as skirts trousers and coats which can then be augmented with seasonal pieces that that might not I don't know <laughs> if that describes my wardrobe but no matter what you call your closet and your wardrobe most of us would agree that we don't want to spend any unnecessary time getting dressed and on our clothing selections so today here are 10 things that are big mindset shifts that could help you make peace with your closet and make it so much easier to curate your clothing and to get dressed in the morning and this video was inspired by a similar one that joshua becker did so i'm i'm borrowing some of his ideas and then adding in some of my own i will link to his video down below you'll want to check out that one as well but number one is confidence. And I like to think of this as putting on a smile. I think sometimes we overthink confidence and we're like, oh, I've never been confident. I've never had good self-confidence. How could I start now? If you will just start smiling and smiling at people, it doesn't even matter what you're wearing. Here's what's so cool. If you look at the brain science behind a smile, when I smile at you, it lights up the reward center in your brain. Why that happens is because your brain is thinking, oh, I did something to make them smile. Something about something about me uh, made them happy. It made them smile. It gave them this kind of response. Wow, there must be something good about me. So when you smile at others, it builds confidence in them. And then what happens? They smile back at you. They're warm towards you. They're friendly. And then that builds up our confidence too, right? It's like this win-win exchange. And so if you will smile <laughs> when you encounter anyone, whether it's your family, it works well with them too, or when you're out and about, this will make a huge difference in your own personal confidence. All right, number two is an appreciation of personal style over changing trends. You know, I think there's a lot of experimentation involved with figuring out what is our own personal style. For me, I just like to wear a top with jeans, something easy. Often it's black, sometimes it's not, right? It just kind of depends on the season that we're in. But I've learned what I like and what I don't like. And number three is understanding the transient nature of fashion trends. And you know, now it's often called fast fashion. We know now that clothing retailers will not make lots of money if they're not constantly changing the trends, right? It changes all of the time. And so there is something about realizing our own personal style and how can I make it classic? How can I make it stand the test of the time and not always get pulled into these new trends? Now, don't get me wrong. I like to buy a few current pieces every season. I'm not against that, but I'm not changing out my whole wardrobe. So I'm looking for jeans and shoes and a few tops that are just timeless, that just stand the test of time. That is the basis of my wardrobe. And then I will switch out a few things occasionally based on current trends. But that's the smallest section of my wardrobe. The bulk of it, I want to be trend resistant, <laughs> right? I don't want it to be fast fashion. I don't want it to be constantly changing. Most of the time, I want to be able to pull out pieces that are fairly timeless. And again, they match my personal style and they're resistant to all of the changing trends. We each get to decide where that line is for us, but it does feel good not to be switching out your whole wardrobe every season. Number five, knowing that there are more important things to spend our money on than clothing. Now, again, this line is different for each of us. We just got back from a mission trip to Mexico. I'll be sharing about that next week. But man, I mean, you get outside of the US, you experience how others live, you understand how incredibly fortunate we are. It makes you rethink everything. And so when I came back home, I just remember, I, like one of the things I said, I'm like, I don't need to upgrade anything. Like we are so fortunate uh, with all that we have. And so having experiences like that 
definitely helps me to keep perspective that clothes aren't bad. It's fun to buy a few new pieces here and there, but mostly I want to save my resources and my money to spend on other things. Now I have a bonus tip for you as well, and that is to get a really great night's sleep because no matter how cute your outfit is, if you are exhausted, you're just, it's not gonna look good, right? So today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. They are premium mattresses customized to fit your unique needs. And we've had our Helix mattress for almost three years now, and we're sleeping just as well on it now as the first month that we got it. And one of our favorite things about Helix is that they take all of the guesswork out of getting a perfect mattress. So you just go online and you take their sleep quiz and you answer a handful of questions, like what position do you normally sleep in? So for Tom and I, we're side and stomach sleepers. It'll also ask you what firmness you like. We're both a little bit more on the firm side. And if you ever wake up with back pain, we both have been waking up with back pain before we got our Helix mattress. And then they'll also ask you, uh, do you get hot while you're sleeping? So they have some really cool technology built into the mattresses to ensure that you get a really cool night's sleep as well. And so after we took the quiz, we were matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. Now our next favorite thing about Helix is that it is so convenient because the mattress comes rolled up in a box and is delivered directly to your door. And if you're in the US, shipping is free. It's included with the price of your mattress. And so it shows up at your door, you bring it into your bedroom, you unroll it, let it take shape, and that same night you can be sleeping on it and getting a really great night's sleep. And once you get it into your room all set up, Helix wants to make sure that you love it. So they offer a 100 night sleep trial. So you get to sleep on it for over three months to make sure that it's just the right fit for you. And if not, don't worry, they'll gladly help you exchange it. Beyond that, they also have a 10 year warranty. So you can sleep well for 10 years, <laughs> trusting that your mattress isn't gonna break down. And did you know the Helix lineup offers over 20 unique mattresses now, including their award-winning Lux, that's the one we have, as well as their ultra premium elite collections. And we believe in our Helix mattress so much that we got one for my grandma, my parents are sleeping on a Helix, all of our kids are. So you definitely don't recommend something as important as a mattress to someone unless you fully believe in it. So chances are you've been thinking about upgrading your mattress for a little while now, and now is a great time. If you use our link down below, you're going to save 20% off your own Helix mattress and get two free pillows as well. So I will put all those details down below. And I truly believe <laughs> that getting your beauty sleep makes such a huge difference. Number five is being mindful of the example that we're studying it for our children. Yeah. This one's a little tricky, right? I talked about last week how I understand that our kids are picking up way more from what we do than what we say. And our kids are awesome, but even I've been a little disappointed how much effort they put into their appearance and their clothing and all that. And again, it's different for all of us. We can decide where the line is, but I've just felt like it's been like skewing a little bit more towards like too much time, too many outfit changes before we go to co-op, you know? So of course I model that with how I approach my clothing and my wardrobe. And then we also have some ongoing conversations about it, but this is definitely something that I'm super aware of these days. Next is to understand the season that we're in. Some of us love fashion, others of us don't. My twin sister Diana really enjoys clothes. She likes shopping for them, putting outfits together. She likes looking nice. I am much further down on the spectrum of I want to look presentable. Sometimes I want to look a little trendy. Other times I just want to blend into the background. And so I don't care to put as much time and effort into it but no matter where you fall on that spectrum, it's important to match our current wardrobe to our season of life. And something that can be a really good clue is if you look around your bedroom or your closet where you keep your clothes, if there are piles of clothes, if there's laundry baskets spilling over, if there's stuff draped over a chair or not put away, then that is a signal to you that you are in a season of life where you can't manage a lot of clothing inventory. And it doesn't mean that it'll be like that forever, but for now, maybe you don't get to have so many clothes until you can manage them again, right? That we decide that for ourselves of like, we look at the data around us. Wow, I don't have the bandwidth right now to keep up on all these clothes that's okay. So I might decide then I'm going to have a much smaller wardrobe right now. I'm going to make it really easy down the road. I might decide to change that. But for now, right here, I need to manage much less clothing inventory. Number seven is gratitude for what we have. And again, I think this gets a little tricky because when we follow certain influencers on social media, and I mean, when we just look at the world around us, like it's fun to see cute outfits and, and the changing styles and all the women around us that are wearing all of these different things. But the problem is it can make us feel that what we have isn't 
good enough. And so again, I think this is a mindset shift that takes some intentionality. And what I have learned is that I can enjoy outfits on other people. I can appreciate them. It doesn't mean I have to have it for myself. Like there's some Sundays where I feel like we go to church, especially when the seasons are changing and I'm like, wow, I feel like everyone has like a new outfit on and they put a lot of time into like coordinating, coordinating everything today. And I'm like, oh, and here I am wearing just my old clothes, you know, but I've come to realize that it's okay. I can appreciate and I can enjoy uh, what others are wearing and the outfits that they put together, but it doesn't mean that I can't be glad for what I have or feel like I have to upgrade everything that I have. And so I've, I've kind of separated it out and that has helped me to not feel like what I'm wearing is not good enough because you know, as we know, uh, most people aren't even really paying attention to what we're <laughs> wearing, right? So it's, it doesn't actually make that big of a difference, but being grateful for what we have is definitely a mindset shift. The next one is that everything should fit our today body. And this comes from Courtney Carver from Project 333. I love her guidelines around clothing and, and everything that she talks about. But if we are going to have a small wardrobe, if we are gonna make it mindless and easy to get dressed in the morning, everything has to fit and be an option for today. And so that means having the mindset that I only have things front and center in my closet that are an option for today. They fit my today body and that makes it super easy to get dressed in the morning and to feel good about myself, right? I don't need all that stuff that doesn't fit mocking me. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Number nine is to understand how our brains are wired. So again, marketing, fashion retailers want us to think that we need a variety, that we need lots of options. We need things for dressy occasions and not so dressy occasions and at home occasions and that we need all of this variety. But the truth is, is that our brains are not good at managing inventory. So we bring in all of this clothing. Many of us have these huge walk-in closets. Now they can hold so much, right? They can hold so much. Oh my goodness. And so we just fill them and we have so many options and we think that's what we want. We think I am prepared for anything, hot, cold, short sleeve, long sleeve, fancy, not fancy, I've got options. But the truth is that is so overwhelming to our brain. We don't need lots of options. And again, going back to Courtney Carver and Project 333, she proposes that you have 33 items for three months. And she says that even with just 33 items, you can still be prepared for every temperature and every occasion that you might have coming up in those three months. Now, most of us have never tried this, so it's kind of hard to believe, but it works. I have lived, I, I I don't even have 33 items. I've probably lived with around 25 items or less in my wardrobe for the last eight years. And there's never been a time that I didn't feel prepared for the event or the season that I was in. We think we want lots of options and lots of inventory to choose from, but the truth is our brain is not good at managing all of that inventory. And then lastly, understand that there is an element of trial and error when it comes to clothing. The worst is that you go to the store, you find something, you try it on, you're in the fitting room, you're like, yeah, I think this would be a good fit, right? And then you get home and you're like, ugh, you take the tags off, you wear it one or two times and you're like, this is, it's just not. Like it's, I find myself passing in over it. And especially, you know, understand fast fashion, wanting to be more aware of how clothes are sourced and ethically made and all that. There was a time when I was like, okay, I am going to invest in really high quality pieces and those are going to be my staples and they're going to be classic. And, and it puts so much pressure on myself. Like if I'm buying a like $80 merino wool shirt, like I have to love it, love it. But what if my weight fluctuates? What if I get it and then I don't love it, right? There's a lot of pressure on that. So I think it's helpful to understand that we're trying to be more intentional about the pieces that we're bringing into our wardrobe. We're trying to find some good staples, not have so much fast fashion in it, but there are still gonna be times when we might make mistakes and that's okay. I would say I bat still like an 80% average of the clothes I get, whether I like really like them and they stand the test of time or not. And I am so intentional about the things that I bring in, but still I sometimes just make mistakes and that's okay. I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to be really intentional. I'm trying to like follow my own rules and really stick to my personal style and what I believe I like and don't like. Um, only shopping at the stores that I've had good experiences with 
but there are still times when I make mistakes. So it's still gonna happen and that's okay. My best advice is find a really great uh, thrift store, secondhand store that you love donating to. I've talked about Grace and Glory before, like they're not far from us. And so now I feel good at least knowing that if I am gonna donate something that hasn't been worn a lot, it is going to help women in domestic abuse shelters. Like it's not perfect. <laughs> like I would still have rather not bought the thing, but that feels so much better. So have a great place that you love donating to. And I do think that makes it just a little bit easier. And I will show you a few like physical things I'm adding it to my wardrobe that really fit in along the lines of like the staples, the timeless pieces. So I have really come to like sorrel shoes and especially their sandals. And so I, I'm okay investing in these. Well, you all know too, right? As you get older, it's like, you gotta invest in good shoes, right? <laughs> so I see that from so many of you all the time too. Um, so these are a new pair that I got that are so comfortable <laughs> they're so incredibly comfortable and they're kind of cute and trendy too so i'm excited about these um just a standard leather bag this has been my go-to for eight years now i i don't even know if it's still stylish like this color leather <laughs> and stuff but i don't actually this is part of like my personal style now i love the versatility and um, it's it's the right size too where it fits things if you need to but it doesn't fill up with too much stuff Also, of course a pair of mom jeans. I have two pairs of jeans now from Madewell and man They're so expensive <laughs> Like We all have different levels of like what is expensive to me. They're very expensive <laughs> but They last a long time. They fit really well. I just feel like they're really forgiving so I am to the point now where I like to invest in good pairs of jeans and good shoes and then tops they're still I would like to like yeah, source them more sustainably and all that but most often they still come from TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Amazon um, my black scoop neck tees will be a staple this year I've been trying to add in more color but day in day out the black Amazon basic scoop neck tee is still my favorite and then also um, my jewelry my gold jewelry this is from trades of hope which I love because it helps women out of poverty and so I'll put links for this um, especially if you're looking for some really cool Mother's Day gifts there jewelry is incredible so I'll put a link for that but I just have a few standard go-to pieces and dress it up dress it down it's just what I always grab and I just love the simplicity of it again not being overwhelmed by tons and tons of options we think we want lots of options but our brain is like no no more options our world is so crazy the way it is like just stop with all the options okay so there you have it 10 non clothing items to add it to your capsule wardrobe and a few actual clothing and other stuff items as well. I would love to hear your ideas down below. What mindset shifts have you made when it comes to your clothing? What are your go-tos? What's your personal style? What brands or other things do you love? Have you found some um, things that you can source more ethically and sustainably? I'm always on the hunt for new brands that don't break the bank too, right? <laughs> so if you have any ideas around that, I am all ears and I know others would benefit from that conversation as well. But I'll link to some of my other wardrobe videos here, how I declutter clothes, how I decide what stays, what goes. So I'll put those here as well, but I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.